everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to be back here with you today. Um, I am Miss Valerie Wayman, and today is Sunday, January the 10th, 2021. Um, and this lesson is for our middle school and our high school students. So if that's you, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I just want to thank you for being here with us today so that we can go ahead and get get going with this lesson. Um, we've been talking about some really, really exciting things and some really thought-provoking things these last few weeks. So I hope you're prepared to continue on that track today. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with prayer. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, for you are worthy to be praised. God, we thank you for seeing us through to a new year. Um, God, and I thank you for each and every person who's watching this video today. Um, I pray that we will all learn something today as we read through the scripture and as we uh, talk about today's topic. Um, God, I pray that we'll be better people as we walk away from this and that um, you will speak to us and help us to know more, more about who you are and more about who you want us to be. So we thank you and we praise you. We give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what we're going to do is talk about a topic today, and that topic is ethics. Right? Really, really, really deep stuff. Um, so this is continuing on our um, on our big topic, which is truth, which they call truth or dare. And, and this is getting into um, a section about ethics and morality. Um, this is a topic you may or may not have gotten into yet, even at home, at school, um, or even in, you know, lessons at church. Um, so we're not really going to go too deep in it today, but I do want to share a couple things with you about it. So first, let's go ahead and get um, into our scripture. All right, so our scripture today is from Genesis chapter 12, and it's verses 10 through 13. So if you want to go ahead and pull out your Bible, pull out your phone, your tablet, um, however you are able to read the word of God, um, go ahead and pull out that now. And we can uh, go through this scripture together. And I'm just going to read it aloud. So we have Genesis chapter 12, verses 10 through 13. So verse 10 starts, says, um, now there was a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. Verse 12 says, when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say, say you are my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Really deep, really deep stuff. So, you know, they're traveling. Um down to Egypt um, when they kind of get into like, I guess what you would consider a bad part of town. Um, and what they would have done was killed Abram, um, but kept Sarai. And so what they wanted to do was basically lie and say that he wasn't her husband, that he, that she was his sister um, so that they would spare his life. So what I wanna do is wanna take a pause here now that you've heard the scripture lesson for today. Um, and I wanna show you a video. So. Let's talk about ethics. Since the beginning of humanity, people have been pondering deep questions. Some of those questions may include, what should I do? How do I decide what I should do? Or what is right and what is wrong? Ethics is basically asking, how should I live my life? It's all about values and behavior. Let's look at two types of ethics, philosophical and Christian. Philosophical ethics bases behavior on reason and evidence. Christian ethics bases behavior on God's will. Both take into consideration issues like suffering, the well-being of others, the common good of all humankind, what makes moral character, individual responsibility, and consequences and circumstances, just to name a few things. They both challenge moral relativism this idea states that morality is relative to cultures, groups, or individuals. In other words, it means that morals depend on where you live and what culture says is okay. Many people say it is the same as tolerance, although it is not. However, philosophical ethics also challenges the concept of moral authority, claiming that is basically blindly accepting a supreme authority dictating what is right and wrong, or good and bad. Instead of relying on what others say is right or wrong, 
philosophical ethics relies on individual reasoning skills to choose what is right or wrong. Christian ethics says that there is an authority, God. His word does not give us a list of ethical choices for us to blindly follow, but it does give us boundaries or guidelines for making ethical choices with a morality that reflects God's design for His creation. Our reasoning is good, but fallen and flawed. God has proven Himself trustworthy. Therefore, we rely on the Creator for guidance in making ethical choices. We are created to ask deep questions. We should be asking, what should I do? How do I decide what I should do? And what is right and what is wrong? As Christians, we need to remember to whom we take these questions. God, our Creator, is our authority for ethics. All right, so that was our um, video about ethics. I hope it gave you a little bit of an understanding about what it means um, and how we approach these types of conversations. So in the past few weeks, what we've learned is that um, obviously that Jesus is the truth. Um, and we've learned that um, he tells us the truth, but some things that the Bible addresses, it doesn't tell us clearly, or it says little about, um, you know, where, how ethical things are, right? So um, there are some gray areas, but what we should all want to do is just understand God's will. So right now, what we're looking into is that ethics and right and wrong are some of some topics that even, um, you know, the most philosophical people in the world have trouble deciphering. Um, they have trouble um, even agreeing on topics such as ethics what's right and what's wrong and what some people view uh, view as what was the right thing to do and what was the wrong thing to do. Um, but, you know, the conversation also comes with opinions and that's why there's no, you know, some people don't agree. Um, so the point of our lesson isn't necessarily to teach you what to do when these situations arise. It's not necessarily to tell you what's ethical and what's not. Um, what it is meant to do is just start get you thinking, start to get you thinking about um, what, it is God wants us to do. And so Abram made a decision that he believed would uh, protect him and Sarai from being killed, protect them um, from being overtaken and you know, to spare their lives. Um, the question could come up, was he wrong ethically? Um, the answer would be different depending on who you asked, um, but he did what he believed was best. So one thing that we can all agree on is God is the authority on all things, even ethical things. Something that I love, and you know, Bishop Thomas has said this quite a bit, you've probably heard him say it, is that God is not intimidated by our questions. This is a good point because sometimes these situations and these conversations can be a bit tricky. Um, we may not know what to do or how to, you know, how to handle a situation. Um, some things, you know, like in the situation with Abram, he essentially lied um, so that his life would be spared. So the question becomes, you know, was he wrong to do that? Yes, he lied, which we know, you know, isn't right. But if he hadn't, he could have been killed. So because he lied, his life was spared. So that's some of these situations that, you know, that ethics kind of brings up. But like I said, the conversation and what we're talking about today isn't necessarily to um, teach you what's ethical, but to say that God is the final authority on what is and what isn't and what's right and what's wrong. But what we can always do is go to God with our questions. I love this statement that God is not intimidated by our questions because I know I have quite a few of them. Some situations I don't always understand or I don't know how to, how to um, you know, approach them. I don't know what to do. But God is always there. He hears my prayers. Um, so I may not receive full understanding of the situation. But what I know is that God is listening to me and that he will answer me. Um, he will guide me in how to handle the situation. So he's not surprised if we have doubts, right? Sometimes that's just in our flesh to do is to doubt. Um, but we serve a God that can't doubt. He has no ability to do that. Um, he knows all things. And so there is no doubt in God. 
Um, and so I love that. I love the fact that I can go to God with my questions. I can tell him, I don't understand. I don't know how I'm supposed to move forward. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And he'll answer me. And that's really reassuring. So the bottom line is that there are some hard choices that we have to make. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll be presented with situations, whether it's at school or at work, um, whether it's at home, where we may have to make a decision that may not always be what some people see as the best decision, but it may be what's best in that moment. Um, so today we're praying that God will help us make wise choices. Um, we also pray that we'll realize that he is the standard of truth. Um, the world will tell us all types of things. The world will tell us that you know, we should handle situations in one way or another. Um, the world will tell us that we've handled situations wrong because we are following the will of God. But what's, good, what's important to remember is that God is the final authority on all things, even the things that the world doesn't understand, even things that we don't always understand. Um, and so this is essentially the conversation, and this is what we're going to talk about just over the next couple of weeks. Um, like I said, I you know, I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do in situations, but what I am here to, to tell you and to, you know, reassure you of is that God is always with you um, and that he'll be with you when you're making these tough choices and that when, you know, when you don't know what to do, all you have to do is talk to him. And it doesn't have to sound like anything in particular. Sometimes we can be intimidated by what prayers sound like, but God appreciates our effort and our honesty because he already knows how we feel. And so by being dishonest with him or not being real with him isn't getting us anywhere because he already knows the truth. Um, so it's good to know that he already knows the truth so that what we can do is we can relax, we can let down our guard and just be honest with God about how we feel in the situation that we're in. Um, and we don't have to feel pressure to respond in a certain way because, because we have God who's all knowing, who's all powerful. Um, and so that's, that's the long and short of what I wanted you to get today, um, is that God is the authority and that you're not alone, that he has the answers, so you don't always have to. Um, and so that's, that's where we are today. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into this next week, um, and we're going to, you know, look into a couple other, you know, biblical situations about um, the way the Bible talks about ethical situations, but we're also going to talk about some everyday choices, some everyday situations that might come up. In the meantime, if you have questions, if you have a question that you'd like to ask me um, or any of the other teachers or even, you know, one of the members of the young adult ministry, you're more than welcome to, you know, send us an email. We're at calvarybaptistyam at ymail.com. That's calvarybaptistyam at ymail.com. So please feel free to shoot us an email with any question that you may have, and we'll do everything that we can to get you an answer. Um, I love being here with you guys. Um, I love having these, um, you know, these lessons with you. I can't wait until we can have these lessons together in person, or even if it's over Zoom, if that's the way it has to be. Um, but I'm so glad that we're able able to be here with one another even if it's in this capacity but one day we're going to be able to have a real conversation with one another so in the meantime until I see you guys again I hope that you have a great day I hope that you have a wonderful week um, and that you know today's lesson will give you something to think about until we meet again I love you guys and I can't wait to see you again soon bye